sometimes you have data in, in different data types, such as this is an integer and this is a floating point number. Uh, you can convert from one to the other. This is called casting. Either you can let uh, the computer convert by itself. This is called implicit conversion. Uh, in this example, you take an integer times a float, and you store the result in an integer. Now, the, the final conversion is pretty clear. Uh, before it gets stored in score, it is going to be converted into an integer. Otherwise, it wouldn't fit into the memory slot. However, is bonus converted to an integer before multiplying with score? Or is score converted to a float? And then you multiply both of them, and then you convert the result back to integer. Well, the, the computer has rules for this. It automatically does the, the first option, of course, because there are less conversions involved. Uh, but you as the programmer might not be sure which one it is doing. So you can explicitly convert simply by putting the conversion that you want to make in a parenthesis in front of the variable that you want to convert. So in this case, uh, the bonus is remade into, is cast into an integer, and uh, then you add it to the score. Of course, when you convert a float like this one into an integer, you're going to have some loss of data. Uh, we can't have 0.5 in an integer. Uh, what C Sharp does is that it simply removes the decimal points. So this one would be 11. And the uh, score down here would be 21, assuming that this one is 10 and uh, this one is 11 and, and a half. We remove the half. Of course, if you convert an integer such as this one uh, to a float, then you don't have any, member, uh, any data loss uh, because the 10 can be stored in a float. I also want to go over a few new operators as well. None of these operators are actually not none of them are are necessary. You can you can program without them, but they do speed your code up both when you type and and when the computer executes them. Uh, the first two ones are the increment operator and the decrement operator. If you just type x plus plus uh, and then a semicolon of course then that is a full statement uh, it does the same thing as adding one to plus then assigning the result back to plus and it is of course a bit faster because this is done in two steps you add and then you assign and this one you add and assign in the same step now you can place the the increment operator in two different ways. You can place it uh, after or before the variable. If you place it uh, after, then it's called post-fixing the increment operator. Uh, and this means that you first assign to y, then you increase the x. If you, on the other hand, uh, prefix the x, that means that you're first incrementing x, and then assigning to y. So in, in these two cases, if x starts out as 10 here and starts out as 10 there, the y is going to be 10 here, and it's going to be 11 here when we are finished. Uh, there was also more than one assignment operator. You've done this one before. Maybe we should have a capital A there. Uh, there's also the addition assignment operator. Uh, I have an illustration of it down here. I'll jump down to that. The uh, addition assignment operator 
basically does the same thing as um, the increment operator, but you can choose the number. So in this case, uh, x plus y, you add those up and then you assign to x. Uh, then you can add and assign in a single move like that. Uh, this is the case for uh, subtraction, multiplication, and division too, of course, and you can even do it with the modulus assignment operator. You might ask what the modulus assignment operator is. What is modulus? Well, modulus returns the remainder of a division. If you divide 3 by 2, you can divide it one time, and then you have one left that you can't divide. So that's the remainder that this one throws back. 5 divided by 2 would uh, also have a remainder of 1, so that would return the same result. The while loop is similar to the if statement, except that you can execute the code block several times. First, we set the jams members to 23, and then we evaluate the expression in the while loop. Uh, if it evaluates to true, which it does, then we print justified, and uh, then we decrease jams members. Uh, when we get down to the curly bracket, we jump back up to the while loop and evaluate the expression again, uh, and print justified again, and so on. We keep going back up there until the expression evaluates to false. The 24th time we come up to while, then it's going to check if 0 is more than 0, and that is false. So we will only print justified 23 times. We will never print it the 24th time before continuing with the code and printing ancient. A for loop is uh, similar to a while loop, but it defines a counter. Uh, first, you define the counter, you create, you declare a variable that you will evaluate, and then you have the same thing as in the while statement that you uh, evaluate an expression. As long as it is true, then we keep doing the code inside the, the block. And then we have uh, the incrementation or the whatever you want to do with it, you can decrease it here too, uh, inside the, the for statement instead of inside the code. A lot of people think this is a beautif more beautiful way to code because you have everything defined on the same line and you still have a counter that you can use inside your co uh, code so you can print the numbers 1 through 10 in this loop. Uh, you don't have to declare any variable above here like we did with the while loop and you don't need to increase or decrease it inside the code block. Uh, it's up to you which one you choose to use, but usually if you're counting something, people use a for loop, and if there is some other thing to evaluate, which is not a counter, then uh, you, people usually use the while construct instead. There are two ways to make this a bit quirky. Uh, if you put um, uh, let's put minus 10 here instead. Then it's going to evaluate to false right away. So we never execute the code inside the statement. Same thing if we start with 15. Uh, same thing, sorry, a similar thing happens if you don't increase this one. Well, let's say we decrease it instead. Uh, then it's going to execute, but it's going to execute this code forever. It never gets out of the loop. It's a good way to crash your computer, so maybe you should not do that.